I thank the deputies for raising this important matter. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to an unprecedented challenge across our health services, and none more so than in our nursing homes. It has been an incredibly difficult time, and we are all acutely aware of the huge sacrifices made by people living in nursing homes, their families and staff. I think it is fair to say that the health and safety of residents in nursing homes has been paramount in all our minds over the last 16 months. Nursing homes are a key provider of care to older people in Ireland and are places where over 30,000 of our citizens call home. Those living in nursing homes are considered vulnerable to COVID-19 due to a variety of factors, including their age, their underlying medical conditions, the extent of their requirement for direct care involving close physical contact and the nature of living in congregated settings. As well as this, learning arising from the pandemic to date has highlighted that COVID-19 is much more likely to be introduced into residential settings where there are high levels of COVID-19 in the community. Over the course of the pandemic, restrictions to visiting in nursing homes have been necessary to reduce the risk of spread of infection and to protect residents who may be vulnerable to the virus. However, visiting is part of the normal daily functioning of nursing homes. Indeed, meaningful social contact is important to all our well-being and is something that we have striven to provide as safely as possible. In communicating with nursing home providers, I have continuously reiterated the need to ensure that visits take place to the greatest extent possible in line with evolving visitation guidance, public health advice and risk assessments. Visiting under compassionate circumstances has been maintained under all levels of the government's framework during the pandemic. I have also encouraged providers to communicate frequently with residents and families about visiting and to respond to phone calls by family members as much as possible, given the constraints that staff were working under. Thankfully, COVID-19 cases and outbreaks in nursing homes are now at a very low level, largely due to the positive impact of the vaccination programme. I am pleased to be in a position to report that updated guidance on visiting in nursing homes come in, comes into effect from next Monday, the 19th of July. This is a significant step forward to a return to more normalised visiting for people living in nursing homes and their families. Of course, vigilance must be maintained as we continue to deal with the risks associated with COVID-19 and visiting should continue in line with public health advice and the necessary infection prevention and control measures. In another positive development, significant regulatory reform is ongoing in conjunction with HICWA and is in line with the COVID-19 nursing homes expert panel's recommendations and lessons learned from the pandemic. In April 2021, government agreed the progression of interim enhancements to the current regulatory framework for nursing homes, which will occur this year. These proposals aim to enhance the enforcement and oversight powers of the Chief Inspector of HICWA. With regard to safeguarding issues, I wish to assure the House that the government takes matters and allegations of neglect and abuse very seriously. There are various structures and processes available to protect against abuse and poor care standards and ensure prompt action, including through the independent ongoing regulation and inspection of nursing homes by HICWA. To this end, I met with HICWA last Friday. Safeguarding adults at risk in the context of their interactions with the sector is a key objective of the Department of Health. Every statutory body under its aegis and every health and social care service that interacts with such adults. Where abuse is potentially a criminal matter, it is the full expectation of the department and myself that any such instances in our health and social care services would be referred to Angarda Siakona in the first instance and investigated accordingly. The Department are at an advanced stage in developing its national adult safeguarding policy for the health and social care sector. Extensive policy development work, including stakeholder engagement and detailed research, has now been concluded. This includes service user focus group research and a major international evidence review published earlier this year. 
Legislation to underpin this policy will be developed. A range of structures and processes have been established by the HSE to support and further develop its national operational safeguarding policy. A key principle of safeguarding is that it's everyone's business and all healthcare professionals have key roles regarding the prevention and reporting of abuse. However, the essential role of social workers regarding safeguarding is recognised. The specialist safeguarding and protection teams in each of the nine HSE community healthcare organisation areas are managed and led by principal social workers and they are staffed by social work team leaders with professionally qualified social workers. These teams provide a range of safeguarding functions from direct case management to quality assurance as well as oversight and support to all service providers including those funded by the HSE community support teams as recommended by the Nursing Homes Expert Panel will be implemented across each community health organisation and each of these teams will have access to dedicated social worker resources through enhancements of existing community safeguarding teams. As the House will be aware, nursing home providers are ultimately responsible for the safe care of their residents. Since 2009, the Health Information and Quality Authority, HICWA, is the statutory independent regulator in place for the nursing home sector, whether a HSE managed or a private nursing home. The authority established under the Health Act 2007 has significant and wide-ranging powers up to and including withdrawing the registration of a nursing home facility, which means that it can no longer operate as a service provider. The COVID-19 Nursing Homes Expert Panel made a substantial package of recommendations which also reflect that systematic reform in the way nursing home care and health and social care for older persons more broadly is delivered and financed. Many of the short and medium term recommendations have already been implemented. A number of these relate to the delivery of a broad suite of supports provided to private nursing homes including free PPE, serial testing, HSE COVID-19 response team, infection prevention and control measures and training, and temporary accommodation for staff. The significant examination undertaken by the expert panel provides important learning and a framework for enhancing older person services, both in the short and long term, and this work is progressing. It must be recognised that the pandemic has not concluded. And at this time, a priority focus of government remains on the ongoing management of the COVID-19 response to ensure that the positive gains now being experienced are preserved and that those most vulnerable to the virus continue to be safeguarded in light of the residual risk. This week, I met with family members of people who sadly passed away in nursing homes. The department is continuing to look at options which may be available to the state in relation to listening to the voices of those who have lost a loved one. And Kian Corla, I would like to conclude by expressing my sincere condolences to those who have lost a loved one throughout the pandemic.